Uh, hello. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, this is actually work I did during my undergrad at Caltech. Um, it was part of a, actually like a, we had a prize thing for uh, freshmen and sophomore of who like did a original work in mathematics. So it didn't have to be very sophisticated work. Um, but this was like what I did for that, uh, for the contest. Um, and it ended up splitting first, so that was nice. <laughs> um, but so it has been a few years since I did this, um, but it's the most related, I guess, to a discrete math talk. Because now I actually am a CS PhD student at UC Irvine, um, first year. Um, so it's kind of different from my current research, but it's actually we just recently. So an interesting thing is when I originally did this, I just uploaded it to the archive and left it there after the contest. But then a professor at a different university found it and then contacted me and asked if he could like do a project with two of his students um, to try to expand upon it. So it ended up then in a joint paper that was recently um, accepted into a journal um, on, because they basically improved some of my results using SAT solvers um, and were able to make some of it more exact. So I'll have in there some of like my arguments and then what was actually improved by them, um, like noted in the, um, so the topic is ordered Ramsey numbers, and to understand these, uh, we need to consider ordered graphs, um, which in this context is all the vertices have some labeling one through n. Um, and then we say that an ordered graph contains a smaller ordered graph if there's some mapping uh, such that basically it's order preserving. So if in the smaller graph you have like one to two, then this, and if for that to appear in the bigger graph, it could be anything that was like, it could be like four to six or anything. It just needs to be in the same order. Uh, or if you had a graph on like one, two, three, four, then the same thing, it could be any four in the order within the bigger set um, on the bigger graph. Um, let's see, so we'll see examples of that soon. And then for an ordered Ramsey number, we're going to say and so it's going to be like uh, the usual Ramsey number, where you need the actual graph structure to show up. But now we also require that the ordering shows up. Um, so explicitly, the ordered Ramsey number uh, of the ordered graph h is a small integer n, such that for any two coloring of kn, like in the usual Ramsey number case, we can find a monochromatic, but also order-preserving copy of H with N, K, N. So the first observation uh, on these is that you, you have the easy lower bound on these ordered Ramsey numbers, no matter what the ordering is. So, so yeah, the first important first thing to note is that these numbers are going to be dependent on the ordering. So the same graph can have many different orderings, and that you're going to get different Ramsey numbers in most different ordered Ramsey numbers in most cases, um, depending on what the ordering is. But no matter what the ordering is, it's always lower bounded by the typical Ramsey number of that graph. Um, and then does anyone have a sense of what the easy upper bounds for these might be? Um, like the most trivial one you can think of? Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, so you just, it would be whatever the complete graph on that many, uh, whatever you're looking at. So if H has n vertices, then the Ramsey number for Kn would be an upper bound. Because then when you get the Kn in the bigger graph, no matter what the ordering is, you can find the graph you're interested in with whatever ordering it is. Um, so explicitly, what uh, my paper that I wrote that this thing was about and what this whole talk would be about is actually looking at these small cases. Um, so I'm sure everyone here knows like the, you know, the arguing that the Ramsey number of K3 is 6, right? <laughs> like it's arguments kind of like that where the, you know, the classic one is like, okay, so we know we have three red edges or two blue edges, that was the generality, and then the three red edges, there's another red edge, you're done, or else they're all blue edges. 
So it's, it, this is actually going to be a lot of arguments like that. Um, but they require definitely some different ideas than what may necessarily exist for those small for those small cases when it's just the usual Ramsey numbers. Um, so different kind of methods for arguing upper bounds like that on on ordered Ramsey numbers. And then the lower bound, sometimes I gave lower bounds with constructions, but I didn't look at that too much myself. And that's what uh, my collaborators later did with the SAT solvers. We were able to find a lot of lower bounds. Um, so sometimes can, uh, get the numbers down exactly. So in our case, we're always going to be going against 18 because our K4 is 18. Um, so order Ramsey numbers were introduced in a paper in 2014 by Conlon, Fox, Lee, and Sudikov. Uh, but they were considering like for you know more <laughs> like large on n um, cases in general arguments about um, the ordered Ramsey numbers. In particular, their biggest result was kind of considering um, the ordered Ramsey number for matchings against uh, what it would just the normal Ramsey number for matching. So the usual Ramsey number for matching on invertices would be linear and n, uh, like, uh, but they were able to construct examples through the probabilistic method where you could get that the ordered Ramsey number for matchings was like much bigger than linear and n, as I have right there. Um, so that was m more what they were looking at, and they also gave some results about um, for general graphs like this bound down there. Um, and actually, so what they usually would observe is when the graph was sparser, there could be a pretty big gap between the ordered Ramsey number and the usual Ramsey number. But as the graph became more dense, uh, the ordered Ramsey numbers tended to behave like the standard Ramsey numbers. Um, so that their, their paper that introduced it was a number of results like that along those lines, looking at specific assumptions on the graphs and results like that. Um, so I actually became aware of this while uh, David Conlon was visiting at Caltech when I was working, when I was a sophomore. So then like took a class for him, he kind of talked about this and I talked about it later and that's how he ended up saying, okay, well all these things for the small cases, we don't know anything yet. Um, so that's, that's why I started looking at this in the first place. Okay, so easy first case. Um, or we just have this graph, yeah. Mm -hmm. For the last inequality, so is the love term necessary? The love term in the exponent necessary? Because for the unordered k, we have uh, an upper bound 2 to c times the square root of the number of edges. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I, in terms of necessary, I don't think that they have an argument that would get rid of it. If that makes sense, but would it actually? I maybe you could improve it for it not to be necessary, but I don't think. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. Okay, so for this is so I I'll just call like when we look at the same graph, I'll just use like ordering a arbitrarily, it's just the order that I look at them. So this one. Is two k twos just two edges, where the first edge is has lower ordering than the second edge? Okay, um, and our claim is that the uh, Ramsey number for this is six. Um, so for for the, in for normal Ramsey number, this graph is five. So it, this is already the first. Even in this very small case, there's already a difference from the usual um, Ramsey number. Um, so it, again, it's a very simple proof. Uh, just call it, you can just consider that the edge between one and two is red. So then it forces all of the um, edges between three and six to be blue, or else you're already done. Um, but then you get a blue graph on four vertices, so you already know that you would be done. Um, because that would be a complete graph, like we said. So that, that's, this is the most simple of all the ones that we'll see, but it already shows a difference from the usual case. And then here is a construction of a K5 um, that has that doesn't have this graph, because um, you can see that even when you have it in the usual case, uh, where it would appear for the usual Ramsey number in this graph, it's not appearing because it's not in the right order. 
Um, so this is this is why we can determine it's exactly six. Okay, but now for this ordering, it's actually the same as the usual Ramsey number. So this is ordering B where you have one to three and then two to four um, as the edges. So you know that you already have, so like I said, we know that the usual Ramsey number on this graph is five, so that gives us the easy lower bound. Okay, now for the upper bound, you, we can consider, so remember we're interested that we have one, three, and two, four. So the most natural place to start is like what's one, three in the bigger graph. So we can consider one, three to be red, and then we know that both two, four, and two, five have to be blue, because if either of those are red, we'd be done. Um, but then since two, five is blue, this also means that one, four must be red, just like uh, one, three is red. Uh, but now this gives us another forcing, which is that uh, three, five, must be blue. But then you get the blue copy using two, four, and three, five, because we've forced it enough times where we've got the same, where we've got two blue ones. Um, so that, that finishes it out at five in this case. So that, that was already kind of, so these are very simple proofs, obviously, but it was already kind of interesting to see even with these simple graphs that they could be different from each other and different from the usual Ramsey number. And then this is the last ordering um, for this graph, and this one, so then now you have one to four, and then you have those ones in the middle, two to three on the other edge, and this one is six again. Um, so now, again, the same thing, kind of argument, one, four is red, and then obviously in the same ordering, two, three is blue, but now we get a forcing on one, five, and one, six, making them both red, and it's the same argument. I won't go, like, I I more want to go through the nature of all these arguments and go through them specifically. You can see that this one is pretty similar to the ones that we just showed before it. Um, and then this gets you down to this one being six. Okay. And then again, I gave a construction of a K5 with, um, with no ordering C. So that was a, these were the only ones that I actually determined exactly in the original paper was for this graph. Um, except maybe a few that I just happened. There, there's a, I'll show later, there was one other actually general case where I was able to do exactly, but um, these were the graphs that I did exactly uh, in the original one. Okay, and now this is, these were probably the most interesting, some of the most interesting graphs we looked at was, uh, so we just removed one edge from K4, and you get the diamond graph. Um, so you're just missing one edge from the complete graph. And these were ones that took a, some pretty interest, and all of the orderings kind of had a different argument. Um, and these were the ones that my collaborators looked at with the stat solver. Um, so only actually on this graph did they apply the stat solver and they were able to determine them exactly. Um, okay, so this, our lower bound for this graph um, in general is 10, because that's what it is for the diamond graph in general. And then, yeah, the up ground is 18 as always. So for this first graph, which is just the one, and then two, three in the middle, and four in the side, um, I was only able to argue, but still this took a lot, a decent amount of work actually, that you get an upper bound of 17 um, for this graph. And then the SAT solver later was able to show that it was exactly 15. So the main use, the main thing I use in this proof was actually the fact that the normal Ramsey number for K3, K4 is nine. Um, so I use that a number of times in the argument. Okay, so yeah, so yeah, I mean, this is a great wall of text, but the thing that I also liked about this is that I can actually give the whole proofs. <laughs> like, uh, so like this is, this and then the next page will be the entire proof. Um, so let me see if I can break this down though. So, Consider K17, and now consider vertex 17 um, in that graph, because we have some ordering on it. Um, now we're going to have two cases, either where exactly eight of them are red and then eight of them are blue, so the lowering vert so the edges from 17 to the lower vertices, or one in which at least uh, in which there's at least nine uh, to, of the same color to the lower vertices. Okay, so first we'll consider that. Um, there's uh, nine of them to the same color. Um, 
so then consider the set X uh, that have that have those at least nine from seventeen. And if I let the generality say it's red. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so if you have, actually, I should use red until I want to use red. Um, so th like if you have vertex seventeen, then we're saying that we have uh, at least uh, nine vertices here. Is all we're is all we're saying with all this general. And these are all lower. So uh, yeah, I'll usually if I draw it down, uh, hopefully if it works out, that means like to lower ordered vertices. Um, so we have from Vertex 17, we have at least 9 uh, to the set X. Okay, so, and, but now since the set has size at least 9, we use what I mentioned that we know for the normal Ramsey number that since there's 9, we have at least a uh, K3 or a K4, a red K3 or a blue K4. Um, but now if there's a blue K4, we're done. Um, so then we know that there must be a red K3. Uh, but then having a red K3 already finishes us because now we have a red K4. So this, this was the easier of the two sides. Um, so now you have to consider, okay, what well, if we have exactly eight red and eight blue? Um, so yeah, we now we'll have two sets. Here, I'll try to probably have to do this again. So now we have exactly eight red um, and exactly eight blue. Um, and then we'll call this x and this y. Um, but now we can take, uh, all right, so now we assume that vertex 1 and the ordering is within y, okay? And now you can consider the set that has x and that vertex 1 from y. Um, and then that, we know this again, because this set has size 9, we know that it has a red K3 or a blue K4. And we again know we can't have a blue K4, right? Um, but then that tells us that there's a red K3 in this, in this like, so here's like 1, and then we have Z. And we know that there's a red K3 and Z. So if all the vertices of that K3 where in X we would be done again because we have a red K4. Um, so then we know that we must have that vertex 1 is within um, the red triangle, but then we get exactly, because this is specifically vertex 1, that gives us enough of what we need because then we get 1 has red edges to uh, two of the vertices sitting in X, and then you have those up to 17. So that gives you what we, an ordering of the right order of the diamond graph. Um, so that that was that's what we were that's what I was able to do to get a bound of 17. Um, so yeah, it's, it was this was you can already see this was a much this took a lot longer than those first uh, just pair of edges arguments, um, and it was definitely a much weaker bound. Well, I guess it's, it's, it wasn't too bad since the real one turned out to be 15, um, but it, it that was. Yeah, these arguments definitely became a bit more complicated for these kinds of graphs. Um, and also, I felt like a pretty different than what I had seen on the classic Ramsey number arguments for like defining, like determining these things. Um, it definitely required some like different ways of thinking about it than just um, when you were looking at those. Okay, so now we have. Um, the second ordering that we'll consider of this graph, um, ordering B, so this one, as you can see up here, uh, has the two highest ones on the sides there, and between the two lowest ordered vertices, we have an edge. Um, for this one, we uh, claim that we have a bound of 15, and this one the SAT solver showed was 12, actually. Um, and I won't go through the full... Uh, proof of this one, because this was actually the longest one in the whole paper. Um, but basically, you can consider that if, you know, the same thing, since there were edge 1 and 2 to be colored red. And now what I did was I partitioned the remaining set of vertices uh, 
3 through n like that. And I, at this point, I wasn't assuming what I knew what n was. And then I bounded how large each, so the partition is basically, if you have a, so yeah, right here, like R R is a set that have red from 1 and red from 2. Like R B would be red from 1, uh, blue from 2, and so on. And then I was able to get a bound on how large each of those sets could be. And then that gave a bound on the entire, um, how big N could be. Um, before you would have uh, the graph showing up. Um, so yeah, actually doing all these bounds took uh, maybe like two pages. <laughs> so I wasn't going to go through all of that in this. Um, but yeah, so that was able to give an upper bound of 15. And then the SAT solver showed this one was 12. So this one actually had a pretty, for some reason, this this graph, and I, and I listed this as like the kind of open question at the end is I, I don't know why inherently and when I thought about it like why this one would have such a difference and uh, the bound from the other two orderings because when we look at this one this one's 14 and it's closer to 15 of the other one but like this one was all the way down at 12 so I don't know and the, the normal Ramsey number for this is 10 for the diamond graph so this one I would say is like when you're dealing with this order is much closer um, to what we normally expect in the other one so yeah I don't know what it is like I never really got a sense of actually, like if I had just looked at these, I was never able to guess before I did the argument of like if this was going to be closer to 18 or closer to the lower bound. Um, so I don't know why this graph necessarily is so, so much lower than the other two orderings. The, I don't have, yeah, I don't have the copy for it because they were about a stat solver. I don't know if they even printed it nicely. Um, something incomprehensible. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it was something incomprehensible. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, okay, so this is the, I will go through this one, because this one, I actually happened, the upper bound I did in the paper, um, happened to be tight, um, when they did it by SOT solver, they found that it was 14, and that's what I was able to argue when I originally did it, um, so this, you can see this one, you have one and three on the sides, and two and four have an edge. Okay, so this one had a different um, kind of argument to it than ordering A. Uh, so this one actually required, I used a lemma where we considered an ordered Ramsey number now for this P3 ordered. By that I mean it just goes 1, 2, 3 in that ordering. Um, so edge 1 to 2, edge 2 to 3, and then K3. And argue that this was upper bounded by 5. Um, so to see this, so just consider um, the subgraph on 1, 2, 3. So we know there has to be some red edge or you're just automatically done. Um, x1, x2. And now consider from, take the x2, so that's the higher one of the two of x1 and x2, and then consider x2, x4, x5. So again, this implies that our edge x exists. Um, but we know that it can't actually have vertex 2 because then you already have from x1 to x2 to that either 4 or 5. So it has to be between 4 and 5. Um, but then this implies that 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, 4 are all blue. Um, but then that forces you again to know that 1, 2 is red or you have a K3 and 2, 3 is red or you have a K3. But then you get that 1, 2, 2, 3. Um, forms a P3. So th this this is how I proved um, this lemma. And actually, uh, I had to. This was this was actually the easier proof of this to show. But actually, I needed um, this one up there, which is with K4, and then that's seven. But that was, but it's this basically the exact same kind of argument as I just gave for K3, and that the K3 is a simpler one to give. Um, so this is what I needed for this proof. So you can already, this is kind of already a different flavor of proof than both the two I just showed for A and B. Um, that was another thing I th found interesting when I was doing this, is when I tried to take carry over like one proof idea from one of the orderings to the next, sometimes it just gave terrible results. Like I think I, like when I did that partitioning thing, I thought, oh, this might work well for like all the graphs I'm looking at, right? Like, like having this one, two, and then bounding the size of the sets. But a lot of times that wouldn't like it would even give worse than 18. <laughs> like it, it was actually just so um, every kind of ordering I kind of had to mostly come up with a different 
argument. Um, so for this one, uh, using the lemma, consider k14. Um, and now we have the edges from vertex 14. Here, I'll try to do it. So we have 14. And then uh, we have blue and R. All right, blue and red. Um, again, meaning that these are all having order less than 14. And now one of these has to have size 7 um, because we have 13 vertices left over. Um, so consider if our loss generality for R to have at least size 7. But now we know by our lemma that R either has a red um, path from 1 to 3 or a blue K4. But if we have a blue K4, uh, we're done. But then if we have a red K3, then that actually gives us exactly the kind of ordering that we're looking at in this graph. Um, so that's that was why we were able to do this one down to 14. Okay, so that that is the uh, that finishes that graph that we're looking at. Um, so then the next uh, graph on four vertices that I looked at was apparently called the three pan, which is you have a triangle with a pendant edge off to another vertex. So basically, you can look at uh, orderings of this one, and the first one we'll look at is when you have a, a the lowest ordered vertexes off the highest ordered vertex of the triangle. So 1 to 4 and 2 to 3 right there. Um, so this one we were actually able to, I was able to get a bound, upper bound of 10. Um, so let's go through, this is a shorter one again. So if you have K10, um, so we know then, again, since we have nine vertices, we either have five red or five blue. Um, so consider that we have five red, and then let R be that set. Um, so what we do is we take out the R size of R minus four lowest vertices from R. So then we're just left with, here, I'll, I'll clean this picture, it might be helpful again. So then we have 10. And now we consider down to set R. And we know this has size at least 5. Um, and what we do is we cut off whichever is the lowest um, R minus 4 vertices so that we're left with exactly 4 here. Um, and they're the ones with the highest ordering. OK. And now if there's any red edge, um, amongst these four vertices, then we get a red triangle from because then they, they both have one to ten, um, and then since ten has a red edge to uh, at least to the, the things on this side, then that would give us the three pan that we want, right? Um, so then we know um, that we can't have such an edge, but then we have a blue K four already, right? Because we can't have any edge within this. Um, this is part of the graph. So that already gives us that we have an upper bound of 10. OK. Um, so now we'll look at this graph. Um, so this one, I was able to get an upper bound of 11. Um, so this one, I will go through this proof the slowest, because this is the one that we were actually able, I was able to extend to actually general graphs that look similar to this. Um, OK, so actually, I'll, let me draw this one up so we keep in mind what this one looks like for sure. So this one is just, you connect it to the lowest um, vertex in the triangle like this. Um, so we get a bound of 11 for these. OK, so here's the argument. So we take a k11, and now we have some list from 2 to 7 that we start with. Um, so 
but now we know that within these q, there must be a monochromatic triangle, right? This is the normal r, r of 3 is 6. Um, so what we do then, so we get some, say we get some triangle down here on, I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to visualize this. So like 2 to 7, we get some triangle like that. But now what we do is you um, take away the lowest vertex of this triangle. So it's not necessarily, like we don't, it doesn't mean like take away two. It means, so say the triangle appears on uh, three, six, and seven. You're going to remove three um, from this list. And now you add vertex eight um, to this list. And now again, we know that this has six vertices. Um, so there must be a monochromatic um, triangle. Uh, and when you keep doing this, so again, from that triangle now, you remove the lowest vertex, and so on. For, and you do this five times, and you get five monochromatic triangles that all have a different lowest vertex. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so now what you do is uh, you take, so say that, there we have three red triangles that all have a different lowest um, vertex. Um, yeah. Um, so then what it does is that you force that all of these to the ones lower to it, it must be blue edges. Because then if you had, because we have red triangles, we have three of them. And if any of the lower ones were also red, then we would get this graph that we're interested in finding. Um, so for, we get the, all of them um, must be blue. But then the thing is, you, we've created enough of these that it forces now us to just have the graph we're interested in and the blue copies instead. Um, so that, that was this was the proof for this case. Um, I, I think this one was actually the most interesting of the ones that I looked at. Um, and what's also interesting about this one is that, oh yeah, and this is just, yeah, this is what it ends up looking like. You have a blue, um, two of those three ordered, it must look like this. Um, all right. So what, what was really also interesting about this one was that I was able to extend it to any, so you can attach any Kn uh, to, and having, take the lowest of the complete graph and attach it to another vertex that's even lower than everything else. Um, and I just called this the complete with one pendant um, graph. Um, and what's interesting, what, what we, I'll actually show, we can determine the Ramsey number or the ordered Ramsey number for this graph exactly in terms of usual Ramsey numbers. Um, yeah, it, it, it's a weird result. Um, so this is what it, it will be exactly is that, um, so first I'll show this lower bound and then actually show that I can get, I mean, show this upper bound and then show a matching lower bound. So the ordered Ramsey number, yeah, and this is also off diagonal in a sense, which is also even more interesting. So the ordered Ramsey number for this K, so pendant with an M pendant and an N pendant is just the Ramsey number of MN um, plus M plus N minus one. Um, and this is exact. But yeah, it's kind of strange because I, I didn't, even, yeah, I didn't seen too many results like this before, like expressing <laughs> one of the Ramsey numbers exactly in terms of another, another one. Um, so it, it, it was pretty interesting. Um, Okay, so here's here's the proof, and it's going to work similar to what we just did for um, the simple the graph on four vertices. So you start with one plus uh, RMN vertices, and now we have the same uh, kind of list or set argument that I gave for the last one. So we start with considering two to the one plus RMN, and we know this either has to have a Km or a Kn, right? Just like we had to have one of the triangles from the past one. 
So what we do is we remove the lowest order vertex and then add our next um, highest order vertex to this. And just in the same sense of we did for the previous argument, we do this um, m plus n times, or m plus n minus 1, and then we get a copy of uh, e copies of km and kn doing this, all with different lowest order vertices. Um, and specifically, we either get, we have n red copies of km or n blue copies of kn. And you know that it's going to be exactly this because if you have more, then you're going to get the, we have a complete graph of, um, of the size enough that the one pendant must show up. Um, so that's how we know, we're able to know exactly that we have n of km and m blue copies of km. Um, okay, so now let's look at exactly, so say we have, we have n uh, kms. And then like in the previous case, they all have a unique lowest vertex. And then also like in the previous case, we know that they all, to all the ones less than it, it has to be blue edges. Um, because or else, we, again, we'd be done. That's the graph we're looking for. So we force enough of these blue edges like this. Um, but now what we can do um, is the same similar construction of using these blue edges to get a blue kn plus 1. Um, and then that, that's, but then it's the same thing. So if we instead we had had n blue copies of uh, k, or n blue copies of kn, you do the same argument in the other direction. Um, so that's, that's able to show us the upper bound and essentially the same proof as for the graph on four vertices. The same argument extended to this case. Okay. And now for the final thing, uh, I'll show that we can actually do, uh, we can construct a graph on R, M, N plus M plus N minus two vertices that doesn't have either of these graphs, that doesn't have the one pendant on M or the one pendant on N. So this will show that our, the bound was tight. Um, okay. So what we'll do is, so arbitrarily order that many vertices in the complete graph. And now take the highest order, um, so this one I do have diagrams. So take, I'll flip back and forth. So we take the highest um, R, M of N minus one vertices and call that set Z. Okay. Um, so we know because this is missing one that there's some way, so even if we, we don't know what R, M, and N is, we know that there's, because of how R, M, N is defined, we know that there's, some way to order these edges so that we don't get a red km or a blue kn. Um, so color it in this way that we know must exist. Um, and then this is our subgraph z. So this doesn't have yet what we're looking for. And now take exactly the n minus 1 vertices before z in the ordering, um, right? Because z is explicitly on the top ordered vertices, right? Um, so now take the next exactly below z n minus 1 vertices. Um, and now color all these, color all the edges among these vertices blue so that we get a blue k n minus 1. So um, this y is going to be a blue uh, k n minus 1 there. Um, and now take exactly the n minus 1 vertices before y in the ordering. So we've broken it down like you have the, um, R M N plus minus one, then we have N minus one, now we have M minus one. Um, so you can see that that's just gonna leave us with one vertex at this point. Um, that gets us exactly to the uh, R M plus M plus N minus two vertices that we're trying to uh, construct on. Um, so then we make this set X and we use this to make a red K M minus one. And now we call this uh, subgraph X. So this will be exactly what this looks like. Um, and now what we need to do is we need to specify the edges between these four sets. Um, okay, so then the only vertex left of G, like I just said, that isn't in Z, Y, or X is vertex one. Um, 
So now what we do is we color all the edges between Z and X, where remember X is the red complete graph on M minus one, we color all of those blue. And we color all of the ones um, to Y uh, red. Uh, or, yeah, so all the ones from Z to Y are red, all the ones from Z to X are blue. And then between Y and X, we also make those blue. Um, so now what you need to do is you need to make all the ones between X to vertex one red and all the ones between Y to vertex one also blue. Um, because you wanna make it the same as what it is because again, that, that's okay to have um, exactly M, we just can't have the pendant edge. So if you can see so far, we haven't created, even though we have a lot of uh, complete graphs in this um, of the right size, none of them are having a pendant edge off of, to something lower that's the same color. Um, all right, so this, um, now because we have this ordering, um, whenever we get a red copy of KM, there are no, like I just said, there's no red edges from this KM to a lower vertex in G, so we can check that first. Um, so we have a red KM between like X and one, right? But the, the one is the lowest, so we already know that there's no possibility there and we're fine. Um, and then that's actually the only um, red KM we have here, right? So then you need to check the blue KNs. Um, but whenever we get a blue KN, then there's just no uh, blue edges. Um, so like even though we have a blue KN um, between like Y and the vertices of X, um, all like we said, all the vertices within X are red. So you can't get them within X and all the vertices from X to one are red. So even though we have that blue KN there, we're fine. And then it, we also create blue KN between Y and one, but that's not an issue because again, Y is the lowest that we can have. Um, so base, yeah, this, this construction makes sure that we don't ever get the one pendant edge that we're worried about for this graph. Um, so yeah, that shows the exactly matching lower bound. Is that construction clear? Okay. Yeah, so that, that, that's basically it. Um, sorry I didn't go a bit longer, but that was the whole paper, <laughs> essentially. Um, so we were able to completely determine the orderings when it was K2, when it was just the two edges. That was in the original paper. Um, and then after the SAT solver results, we were able to get the exact orderings for the diamond graph and all the, so yeah, one thing I didn't know, mention at the beginning is there would be like symmetric orderings that aren't interesting. Like when I did the lowest one would be like one to two and the two highest would be three to four. You could switch that and it's not gonna, it's not gonna change the result. Um, so in a sense, most of these actually captured all of the possible orderings um, up to symmetries. So it'd be interesting. Except for, I think the three, I didn't do all the three pan possibility orderings. There were ones on this graph that would be different than what I looked at. Um, and then we were also able to, like I said, we just got up, went over. So yeah, the original paper, we actually had the exact for the one pendant with complete. So that was like the only one besides the K2s that was done exactly in the original paper. Um, and then like I said, uh, I think really the most interesting thing to look at from this and something I didn't really get a sense of while I was doing it is why you get the different, like what, if, if you can make some kind of argument like in gen like anything, and this, this would be more interesting obviously in like a general, if you consider like general size graphs, like if you have certain ordering, like some distinguish certain orderings from others on the same graphs in some structural way and say that you are gonna get a difference in like what the ordered Ramsey number would be under this ordering to a different ordering. Like there's no, like the comparisons that existed in the original paper that I mentioned by Conlon, Foxley, and Sudikov were just differences like from the ordered Ramsey numbers to the usual Ramsey numbers, but there's no results that are like orderings of the same graph. 
like well, like how do you compare those Ramsey numbers to the other one? I think that's actually a much more interesting question, and actually the one that I was trying to work on when I was looking at this, but I couldn't figure out any way to do, do these like extend these into like a general argument like that. Like I was only able to do like specific finite cases, compare these with amongst each other, and compute these Ramsey's numbers like this. But I, honestly, that was like my main goal at the time, and I still think the much more interesting question that exists here, and to my knowledge, it still hasn't been done since then. I think yeah, there's been some other, actually, there's been some other ordered Ramsey number papers um, that followed that one, but they, none of them did what I mentioned. They were doing some other thing, like just some other bounds, other cases, mostly still comparing usual Ramsey numbers to um, the ordered ones, but yeah, so nothing within the ordered Ramsey numbers. Um, okay, so yeah. Uh, yeah, so again, I would thanks David Conlon for telling me about this and um, talking to me about this while I was an undergrad. And then to my collaborators for finding the paper and improving on it and actually saying we should submit it because <laughs> I didn't do that on my own. <laughs> like, I just put it online. And then um, thanks to Davian Lee for having me and Professor Ohm for asking me to speak. Could extend to uh, determining if you have an ordered graph here mm -hmm. and you add a dependent edge to the ordered graph so that the pendant vertex is lower than all of this. Ah, uh, so you're saying. And, and you could do it in terms of the ordered ranking numbers. Yeah, I think, think that, that actually should work. Like, I think you basically, yeah, I think that should work pretty cleanly, actually. Yeah, I didn't think about that at the time, but I don't think anything would be missing yeah, from yeah. doing that, yeah. All right, that, that, yeah, that, that would, in a sense, give you a kind of like recursive way of defining <laughs> these, similar to like how you have the, like there's some... Trees or something, maybe? Uh, is it, no, no, maybe you need a degenerately ordered tree or something. Like when you add a leaf, you always add the lowest number. Yeah, it has to be something like this, maybe. That may work, hmm. I actually do think, I think that would work, yeah, that's yeah. nice. And that might, because I, I know like when there's some of the arguments in the like classical Ramsey numbers is you use those recursive definitions like that, right, to get bounds on them in general. So I, I didn't think about that before, but that might be an interesting way to say something. Yeah. Say something about how do you use the sets of solvent here? What is the, like how do you? I, I so I was not too involved with that part. Um, like I, you know, it's funny. I've never actually met with my. <laughs> it was all through uh, mostly email and Skype calls. Um, but I think it was. I think that it was really just, you know, in the same sense of, I'm pretty sure what they did was just say like you can't. It was basically really hard coded, like the forcing the graph constraints of like, what would be not allowed in order to have. Um, like they, the constraints on both the Ramsey sense and on the ordering sense, they just had different, like the variables for ensuring that you, the ordering was correct and that the not showing up Ramsey part was correct. Yeah. I don't know if there was like anything beyond just yeah, actually co coding all of the uh, constraints like hard coded like that. So it's, it's better than just doing a brute force search somehow. Yeah. yeah I, I think just the, the SAT. But, like the SAT solvers are, ye, op, should be faster, like, cause like, than doing a brute brute force. Um, cause I mean, SAT solvers are generally pretty good, especially for like the fine small instances of problems like this. Um, that uh, yeah, this was definitely like within the realm of where they would be useful for doing something much faster than just like try to enumerate all graphs and then check if it <laughs> was okay or not. Reason why they did the diamond and not the three pans? No, I think um, I think that they did the diamond because it seemed like the harder case, like because the bounds were worse, and I, and it, does, it even with that, even I'm saying the stat solver is fast, but even these instances still took it, I think, a while for each one, like a few days per each instance like this. Um, yeah, so it, it was, I was I remember I was actually debating like. 
So when I when they told me that it was so much better, like for the paper we were actually submitting, I was like, do we even need to put the original arguments like this then? If it was like beaten by the stat solver, but then the professor was like, no, 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 keep it in there because the <laughs> referees are not gonna like that. We just like give them nothing and tell them that it was like four days to solve this on the stat solver. Um, put the put the argument in there anyways. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I think they just didn't want because those didn't seem. To uh, so bad. Like one of them was 17, right? Like I only improved it by one from the 18. So that's I think they were more interested. In, like they were expecting bigger gaps on those arguments than on the three pan ones. But I guess in another sense, the three pan one might have been nice to do because then maybe we could have said those exactly um, if it was closer. But like so, I mean the general construction actually sh shows tightness on the the ordering that that argument comes from. Um, this this ordering because it just follows from the general result on these graphs. Um, but so I guess in a sense these were actually already done tightly for the ones I considered. Um, so that was another reason not to do the set solver there. Why is it an article about set solver? Some people use set solver to have the like, biggest mathematical proof of something yeah. like because set solver provides a yeah, it was like large. larger than Wikipedia, right? Like I think I was, like there's there's a like proof done by a SAT solver that takes up more storage yeah. memory than all of Wikipedia. The certificate really yeah. depending yeah. person can verify. Right. right. So for this kind of problem, for your problem, does the SAT solver? It's a certificate like that. So that's why. Yeah. So it's like. How big? It's not that, that big. <laughs> I, I, I don't know the exact memory storage, but I remember I asked them to send me the files from it at some point, and it was at least downloadable on my laptop. <laughs> so, uh, so that, that. You could transcribe that into a human readable language? Yeah, in theory. <laughs> yeah, you could, right? It, it definitely, like, it is correct in that sense. Like, you could do it. It's just one of those things of. No one is gonna sit down and do it. So there is enough paper for that. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think there would be enough paper for that one at least. I mean, yeah. a couple uh, hundred megabytes of labor and computers. That's Is there any order of crap H which obtaining or which achieved or upper one? Oh, that's interesting. Like, actually hit 18. Um, none that I saw. No, everything that I looked at didn't require all 18. Um, yeah, yeah. Of course. I forgot to say that. I got it's okay. I fall. Um, yeah. yeah, I, I don't. I would. I would. You know, but what's interesting is if, if that were to happen, I would have expected it to happen at the lower l levels like this. Um, not like I think as the it got bigger, then I would expect it be less likely that it would be hitting um, the upper bounds like that. So I, I don't think so because um, none of the ones on four did it do that. Um, I get uh, yeah. I mean yeah. In, in looking at less than four is like not interesting. So. Do you have any intuition about uh, this question of which orderings of graphs will give you higher ranty numbers? Yeah. yeah, no, I really didn't. Even when I, like, it, it, it surprised me. Like, I, I was trying to get one while I was working on this, and then I would, like, you know, like, I, I think I had some of these done first, and I'd look at another one, and I'd be, like, have some, try to guess, right, if it's going to be closer or further from 18, but no, I, like, I was surprised. And then I was, like, so even the ones we know exactly from the SAT solver, I don't have any sense of like why uh, it is. It's interesting to me. So some of the pictures, um, uh, some of the orderings uh, don't have adjacent vertices, or, or may maybe maybe not with the diamond. But if mm. you have just the uh, some of the other ones, you don't have adjacent vertices which have the same, uh, which have, are consecutive in the order. Um, which means that you have some freedom in, in coloring consecutive edges of the complete graph without affecting whether or not you continue. Uh, I, I see. So if so, if in a sense it's kind of I don't know. This is not 
technical word at all if it's like scrambled in a sense. Like yeah, so, so like if you, with the, with, when you just have the pair of matching edges, right? Mm -hmm. if, if the ordering is, um, say, one, three, two, four, mm -hmm. then um, the, the, edge, the, the consecutive vertices are just not relevant to whether this is contained in, in uh, some monochromatic, in some variety of coloring, right? Yeah, that's true, right? Um, and that's why this one was five. Was so so maybe, maybe that's a re one reason which could, like, maybe consecutively uh, ordered edges might be relevant to this. Yeah, because if you had a lot consecutively ordered, it would be forcing up the order advantage. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah I can because those that. are let then sort of more. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or maybe that's the opposite. No, yeah, that's the kind of thing I was, like, looking for, but kind of never like. We'll formalize in a nice way for separating them within the same graph. But that, that, that does make sense, yeah. And that's, yeah, like the other two for this graph are six, but this one is five. I mean, it's a very small example of object. Yeah, like this one being contained, is like, it, it, because it's contained in some smaller graph, it's, mm -hmm. it's the, the, yeah, it's like you have to, you, you don't care what color happens around the sort of perimeter of the, right, the right. graph. Right, right. Mm -hmm. uh, it'd be nice. nice if that could be, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Extend. Any other questions? Sorry for that.